Um, our next speaker is Dr. Jennifer Al. Jennifer was our one of our own trainees. She went to Philadelphia to do transplant at State of Jefferson as faculty there for five years, and we recruited her back. And she is here today to demystify the MELD exception on HCC. And, and Jen just had a baby less than a month ago, so we're lucky to have her. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me here. So as Dr. Pakros mentioned, today I'm going to be talking about demystifying the MELD exception for HCC. Recently, there's been a lot of changes to the MELD exception policy, so we just wanted to update everybody and make sure they were aware of all recent changes. Nothing to disclose. So before we talk about the MELD exception specifically, I was just going to talk about first how liver transplants, deceased donor liver transplants are allocated. So initially, starting in the 1980s, organs were allocated really based on the child Pew score. And very early on, patients for HCC were transplanted. However, it was found that there was very high rates of recurrence, high mortality. So it really wasn't recommended that patients with HCC be transplanted, and that kind of fell out of favor. Then in 1996, we had the landmark paper by Mazzaferro, where he um, laid out the Milan criteria and found that those patients with HCC within Milan criteria had very good transplant outcomes. So then again, people started offering transplants to patients with hepatocellular carcinoma. What was found is that in the child Pew era, those patients with HCC um, did not have great opportunity to actually get a liver transplant because there was no part of HCC factored into the child Pew score to give them priority. So in 2002, when the allocation was changed from child Pew priority to a MELD score, and this was done also because of the high level of subjectivity with the child Pew score, you know, the child Pew score incorporates ascites and encephalopathy, which are really based upon the clinician's um, discretion to score, whereas the MELD score is purely a lab-based score, so cannot really be influenced by the clinician quite as much. But what was also known is that the MELD score also does not factor in anything related to HCC so that patients who were listed with HCC would be at a disadvantage. Um, so when the policy with for MELD score was first implemented in 2002, that is when a MELD exception policy was also adapted. Um, in 2016, the MELD score was updated to also include the sodium level. And um, in 2020, what was changed was that organs were not allocated based on donor specific areas and donor regions as had historically been done since the 1980s, but instead there was a change in policy to what we call acuity rings. So what are these regions? What are acuity rings? So from the 80s till 2020, these are the different regions that the country was divided into. And you can see there are 11 different regions. And when an organ became available within a certain region, first it went out to the more local donor specific area. And then if there was no patient identified within that area that needed that organ, it went out to the larger region. What was found is that across the country, there were certain regions where patients were being transplanted at much lower MELD scores. For example, region three, so down in the south down where Florida is in Louisiana, and areas like Southern California were very disadvantaged and the MELD scores were very, very high. So in 2020, they implemented the acuity ring policy to try to help reduce some of those inequalities. And so the idea is um, that when a donor becomes identified, wherever that donor is, whatever hospital that donor is at, the organ offers go out first to those patients within a 150 nautical mile radius from that hospital. So as you can see, it crosses different regions depending on where that donor hospital is identified. So um, what you can see, the idea is this is how it's allocated primarily for donation after brain death. So first, its offers are given to the highest severity patients. So first, status 1A and 1B patients within that 150 nautical miles. If there's no patient that qualifies there, then it's those with a MELD or a PELD score greater than 37. And again, if nobody identified there, it goes down through all these different categories in um, acuity. And then if 
still no patient identified, then the rings get increased in size. So it goes out from 150 nautical miles to 250 nautical miles. And still, if no patient identified, it goes all the way out to 500 nautical miles from the donor hospital. Disease after cardiac death is a little different in that they're more interested in trying to reduce the ischemic time. So they're trying more to allocate the liver to somebody within a closer radius. So um, instead of going down all the different categories first in, um, sorry, instead of going down all the categories in uh, closer radius, they, they want to ideally keep it, keep the organ closer to where the patient was identified, okay? So as I had mentioned earlier on during the child Pew era, really patients with HCC were disadvantaged. They said over 45% of patients listed with HCC did not receive an organ up to two years after they were listed. So there was very high mortality associated and high list of wait list drop off. So in 2002, when they did adopt a MELD score, they put in a standard HCC exception policy. At this point, they actually adopted an exception policy for both stage one and stage two tumors. Stage two tumors are those within Milan criteria. Stage one tumors are those that are less than two centimeters in size. But the idea here was that they wanted to try to find a MELD score that um, was equal to a patient without HCC who would fall off of the transplant list in a similar amount of time. So based on data, they decided, well, somebody with a stage one tumor, they'll give a MELD exception score of 24, and someone with a stage two tumor, they'll give a MELD score of 29, and the thought there that the 29 equated to a 30% probability of progressing beyond stage two disease at three months. And as we know, if patients progress beyond stage two disease, um, they are no longer transplantable. And then in addition to these MELD exceptions, after three months, the patients were given a 10% increase in their MELD score, and it continued every three months until that patient received a transplant, had disease progression, or died, okay? So this policy was in place from 2002 until 2003, and what they found is that the rates of transplant from deceased donors for HCC increased dramatically from 7% up to 22%. The wait time decreased from 2.3 years down to 0.69 years. So they felt that they actually overcompensated, that the policy was now too much in favor of those patients who have HCC. So within a year, they changed the policy and they reduced those MELD exceptions. So stage one patients were only given a MELD exception of 20 and stage two were given a MELD exception of 24 and they still kept that 10% increase every couple of months. And this helped to de decrease the transplant rate. So HCC transplants decreased from 22 to 14%, but this was still felt to be a little too generous. So the get policy was again revised in 2005. And um, at that point, the MELD score was given, the MELD exception was given to at 22, and with that 10% increase every three months, and this policy was in place for quite a while, to 2015. And again, it was still felt that the HCC patients were over-prioritized. So in 2015, the policy was again changed, and at this point, there was a six-month hold put in place. So if somebody with HCC was placed on the transplant list, they were held at a MELD of six for six months, and then if their disease remained stable within stage two, they were given a MELD score of 28. And then every couple of months, that MELD score would increase to a cap of 34. Still felt to favor HCC patients a little too much, so in 2019, they again changed. And at this point, there was a six-month delay still in place, and if patients remained within stage two HCC, they were given a score equal to the median MELD at transplant minus three. So this median MELD at transplant minus three was calculated based on um, transplants done within 250 nautical miles of where the patient was listed. And as we know from 2019 to 2020, there was still allocation of organs based on OPTN regions. And then in 2020 is when the acuity circle policy was enacted. The change that has recently occurred in June of this year is that the acuity circles um, for the MELD exception policy for HCC are no longer calculated based on where the patient is listed, but where the donor is identified. Um, so now, as so instead of the 250 nautical miles from where the, the patient is listed for transplant, where the way that the MELD exception is calculated is wherever the donor is identified, the MELD, medium MELD at transplant at that hospital is calculated based on transplants done within 150 nautical miles of that 
hospital. So the patient's um, MELD exception will vary depending on where the donor is identified. Okay, um, and so in order to calculate this, they said that you know it's within 150 nautical miles, but there have to be at least two transplant centers or at least 10 qualifying transplants done within that region. If there are not enough transplants done within that 150 nautical mile region, then they do increase the acuity circle size um, to try to capture enough patients to have a, a fair assessment of the median MELDA transplant, okay? They did exclude DCD donors, living donor transplants, status 1A patients, um, or livers that were taken from over 500 nautical miles away in calculating these median meld that transplant. And they do update these median melds twice a year. Um, and so you can go onto the UNOS website and actually see the median melds. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, the median melds will vary depending on where the the donor is identified and so you won't have a standard score you won't say my hcc patient has a score of 32 across the board it really depends on where their donor is identified so why was this done well i'm using an example from my home state of pennsylvania um, and the idea here is to try and limit the discrepancies in meld exception scores between centers that are nearby so if we look at two big cities in pennsylvania we have philadelphia and we have pittsburgh pittsburgh their median meld transplant is 26. in philadelphia it's on average a 30. So say you have a donor who's identified in Harrisburg. Well, that's within your 150 nautical miles of both centers. Based on the policy, if you got the old policy, if you had a medium meld transplant minus three for a patient listed in Pittsburgh versus Philadelphia, well, the patient from Philadelphia will get that liver first um, because their median melds are higher. But it was felt to disadvantage those from Pittsburgh. So that's why they now calculate the, the MELD exception based on where the donor is identified, okay? But it can kind of go the other way. So, you know, here in California, within smaller areas, we have wide discrepancies in our medium MELD transplant. If you look at El Centro, which is, you know, inland, they have a medium MELD transplant of 31. If you look on the coast near San Diego and Encinitas, it's a medium MELD of 35, and that's within your 150 nautical miles. Um, so say that we have a patient listed at Scripps with a MELD exception, um, in the old policy, you know, with the median meld transplant of 35, they'd have a median meld transplant minus three would be 32. But say you have a patient who is listed for an age, who's an eight, uh, sorry, an alcoholic cirrhotic who has a native meld of a 29. Well, depending on which donor that which donor hospital that organ was identified at would determine which patient got that liver. And so some people are saying, well, is that fair to the HCC patients? It's, you know, there's a lot of debate still there. So people have, are trying to identify, you know, have our policy changes swung too far? Is it really doing justice for our HCC patients or are we now um, disadvantaging them? So this is a paper that came out in liver transplantation just earlier this year, and it was looking at the impact of the medium meld for end-stage liver disease at transplant minus three policy on waitlist outcomes for patients with and without HCC. So this is the background, which we already know, but the purpose was really to look at the policy and see what it did for patients with and without HCC. So this was a retrospective cohort study. Um, they excluded patients who had living donor transplants who were status 1A, who had MELD exceptions for reasons other than HCC. Um, and they had about 25,000 patients, and they had three different cohorts. So there was the pre medium meld transplant cohort, the post cohort. And if you look at the post cohort, the time period there is a little under a year. And the reason why they cut it off on March 7th, 2020, is that's when COVID hit. And they didn't want um, issues related to COVID to really impact their data. And then they had a post acuity circle cohort where they looked at. Um, just for, a, for about six months based on, you know, when their paper was written and their analysis was done. But what they showed is that weightless dropout actually decreased for patients without HCC post median meld transplant um, cha policy change. And that um, from era one to era two for patients with HCC, we actually also see a decrease in weightless dropout. Okay, 
sorry, this is a little bit small, hard to see, um, but what it's showing is really that in um, shorter waitlist areas, which is where a lot of HCC patients used to travel to to try to get a liver transplant sooner, post policy change, they were not quite as advantaged to fly to those areas to get liver transplants. So there was a little more um, equality between HCC and non-HCC patients in the shorter waitlist areas. In the longer waitlist areas, we really didn't see a statistically significant change, um, but at least in the shorter waitlist areas, we did. Uh, if we look at a multivariate time-dependent analysis um, of attributes related to death or delisting. So having an having HCC made a patient more likely to fall off the list, um, older age, and also higher MELD scores. So a lot of these things we already knew. Um, for those with HCC specifically, also um, what we found is that the men were um, more likely to fall off the list. Again, uh, age, the older you were, you're more likely to fall off the list, and native MELD score um, was a really strong indicator of if the patient was more likely to fall off the transplant list or not. So in conclusion, so policy changes of a six month wait in 2015 was initially shown to reduce differences in waitlist dropout between the HCC patients um, and those without nationally, um, but we still had those regional differences. So that's why there was the policy change for the median MELD of transplant minus three, which showed that there was a 10% decreased dropout in candidates without HCC in competing events regression analysis. Post-policy change waitlist dropouts are nearly identical um, in patients with and without transplant, which is what or sorry, with and without HCC, which is what we had wanted. Um, cumulative incidence analysis showed pre-policy probability of transplants was in one year of 41.5% in the longer waitlist regions um, and 73% in the shorter regions. So, and after the policy, those decreased in the longer waitlist regions. That was not statistically significant, but it was in the shorter waitlist regions. So it does show that the gap is closing as we have wanted it to. Um, but one thing to note is that post-policy changes HCC patients were 54, 57% more likely to experience dropout as compared to those without HCC. So this is, again, have we swung the pendulum too far? Also now with the new change of basing the um, medium melt transplant based off the donor hospital, we're unsure of what that change will do for our HCC patients, so time will tell. Um, but the one of the questions has arisen, you know, should the exception score policy take into account the severity of the patient's underlying disease? So a lot of our HCC patients have well compensated cirrhosis, but some of them are decompensated and those who are decompensated with higher melds have higher mortalities. So should that factor into the meld exception score that patients get? And this is something all to be explored.